We are so thankful that you have made the choice to tune in for one of ACC's messages. You know, as you're listening and diving into the truths that are being shared, we challenge you. If you're sitting at your phone or at your computer, hop on social media and be sure to use the hashtag, you belong at ACC, as God is teaching you different things during this message. You belong at ACC and we truly mean that, which means that we would love to have you join us during one of our Sunday services at 710 Aqua Heart Road. We would love to have you jump into this message and we are believing God is going to do some awesome things in your life today. We're talking about what does it look like to, to run our lives, to, to run our bodies, to run our minds, our spirits in such a way as to, to really pursue health in those different ways. So grab a copy of God's Word today. If you don't own one, you can grab one under the chair in front of you and write your name in it and take that with you. We want everyone in this room to own a Bible. So uh, I want to tell you a quick story about a time where I was told intentionally to lose a race. I played water polo in high school, and uh, the way each quarter starts, you have uh, one team on their side of the pool and the other team on the other. You got to touch the edge of the pool. And as soon as the ref drops the ball in the middle of the pool, it's, you can leave the wall and you're trying to race to the ball. Because whoever gets to the ball first has the advantage of uh, trying, you know, have an opportunity to score first. And so that's a great advantage. Uh, well, we had this trick play that every once in a while, if we were just needing a, a quick score or for whatever reason, our coach would call this trick play. And the, the plan was intentionally to lose the race to the ball. And what we'd have is we have one person from our team hold their breath and go underwater and stay on the, uh, the side that we're defending and just stay at the bottom of the pool down there, all right? And then we'd have other people swim down underneath the water to our scoring, our offensive side of the pool. And, they, uh, and so we'd intentionally lose the race to the ball. The team would get it and think they're, uh, for, uh, all of a sudden everyone's missing. So they're, they're taking the ball in to score. And then our guys pop up out of the water, steal the ball and throw it down to the other side of the pool where we all pop out of the water and there's no one there and we get to score instead of them. It was awesome, right? But have you ever noticed in, a, uh, in track and field, there's not really a trick play, right? There's no trick play in track, right? When you get on that line, the coach doesn't say, all right, now here's what we're going to do. You're going you're gonna to go across the field instead of around it, right? Like that would be cheating. There's no trick plays in track. In 1 Corinthians 9, 24, which is our, our theme verse for this series, right? It says, don't you realize... That in a race, everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize. So what? Run to win, right? We want to run this race in such a way that we can win the race. We want to enter the race, and then once we're running in it, we want to win it. We want to at least do the best we can. We want to run it as if we're trying to win it. And so last week, we talked about spiritual health. How do we maintain spiritual health in our lives? And today we're going to talk about physical health. And I want to encourage you, if you missed last week's message, to go back online on YouTube or Facebook or wherever and watch that message. Because spiritual health is actually a foundational sort of health. You have to get that solid and then you can build your house on top of it. In fact, this is what it says about that in 1 Timothy 4.8. It says, physical training is good but training for godliness is much better, promising benefits in this life and in the life to come. So for that reason alone, if you missed last week's message, I don't want you to walk away today thinking, all right, I just got to work on my physical health. That is something that's good to do, according to, to Paul, as he's writing to Timothy. It's good to train your body, but spiritual training is even more significant. So make sure you start there, all right? But today, it does still say physical training is good. So what does God's word tell us about maintaining physical health? How are we supposed to treat our bodies in this race that we're running? If you think about it, uh, the Bible is a lot like an owner's manual in your car, right? If you have a car, how many of you keep the, the manual uh, in, in your uh, glove box? How many of you keep it there? That's kind of where it goes. It'd be weird to take it out and toss it, right? 
Because you want to take care of your vehicle, that, that, that book inside there, you're going to open it up and it's going to tell you uh, some specific things for how to take care of your car. How often you're supposed to change the oil, what kind of oil to put in it, how often to change the brakes, what kind of tires to put on it. It's going to tell you how to maintain the thing, right? And the more you maintain it, the longer it's going to function properly. Your body, believe it or not, is similar, right? The, the better you take care of it, the better you maintain it, the better and longer it's going to run and work. Now, at the end of the day, even a car that's been properly maintained is eventually going to break down, right? Eventually, you're going to have to replace some parts, right? And our bodies are like that too. Eventually, you get to a place where you're like, you know, I've, I've treated my body nice, but I need a new knee. I need some new hips. I need something, right? And, and there's, there's only so much you can do but at the end of the day, our job is to maintain our, our physical health as best as we can. And the question would be, why? Why do we want to maintain our physical health? Well, think about this for a moment. It's important to understand. Uh, let me read a verse to you in 1 Corinthians 6, verse 19 and 20. It says, don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? who lives in you and was given to you by God. Do you not, you do, you do not belong to yourself for God bought you with a high price so you must honor God with your body. Why? You know, why is it so important to maintain physical health? Well, think about this for a moment. When God uses us to accomplish his purpose, he uses our bodies. He uses our mouth. He uses our ears where we learn. He uses our hands and feet to do actions and to, to serve others and to, to be his hands and his feet in this world. And if our bodies are, are not functioning uh, the way God would have them function, the way he wills them to function, there, there's going to be less things that we can accomplish for his purpose. And so it's important that we do our best to maintain this and to spend some time in the owner's manual to understand why our body works the way it works and how to keep it in tip-top shape. You know, what's crazy about the Bible. Um, God knows a lot about your body because he made it. There's, there's scientists who have got done autopsies on like Egyptian mummies. And he's able, these scientists, they're, they're able to figure out like, what did this guy in? You know, what was it that caused this person to die? And it's amazing how they can still do that kind of stuff. But what a lot of scientists and experts, doctors, they look at like the Old Testament where you have Mosaic law and in Mosaic law, it addresses things like food contamination and water consumption and sewage disposal and infectious diseases and health education. There's all that kind of stuff in Mosaic law. And scientists and doctors are thinking, wow, all that existed way back then. How did they know? Well, at the end of the day, guess what? God created the manual, and he created your body, and he knows how to, how to keep it healthy. And so we're going to spend some time in here today. We're going to break down a few lies that this world tells you about your body and support those with some truth to replace them with. And I hope, uh, I hope it's helpful to you. So let me, let me give you the first lie I want you to stop believing. Lie number one is that your body... And your soul slash spirit are disconnected. That's a lie. When people try to tell you that your body is your body, that's the natural, that's just kind of what's going on over here in the natural science world. And then your soul and your spirit, well, that's all supernatural. And these two things are different. I want you to know that's not true. In fact, the truth is that your body houses your soul and spirit. Your body is the home for the Holy Spirit. Check out this verse in Luke. Luke 10, verse 27, it says, The man answered, You must love the Lord your God with all of your heart and all of your soul and all of your strength and all of your mind and love your neighbor as yourself. You see, we don't want to separate these things as if they're in separate categories. In fact, it's helpful to realize when we're thinking about this that there is a natural scientific explanation and oftentimes a supernatural element when we're, when we're not in physical health. Our, our physical health and our spiritual health are, are very tied together. 
And it, it, it would be foolish to just assume because your physical body is ailing or there's something wrong with it, that it is just a physical science issue. Or that uh, when your spirit is suffering, that it's just a supernatural issue. There's, these things are connected and we need to understand that. It's important to understand that. You see, in the Old Testament, God dwelt among his people first in a, in a, in a little tent portable like thing, moving thing called the tabernacle is where God physically dwelt on earth. And then that was replaced with a, a more of like a permanent type structure called the temple. And that's where God in the Old Testament dwelt among his people. Well now, because of Jesus' death on the cross, those of you who've put your faith in Christ, you now have God living in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. God's not sitting behind the curtain in a temple right now. God lives in you, believer. Your body and your soul, your spirit are interwoven. They're connected. And you need to understand that. Here's a second lie, all right? Lie number two about your body is that your body is yours. This world will try to convince you that your body is your body. That it's yours, that you're the owner of it, that you're in control. Well, the truth is this, is that you are the manager of God's body. The body that you have, the fingers, the, the, the legs, the body, everything, whatever God's given to you, they're God's, and he's placed you as a steward over his body for a season. You are not owned, you're, you're, you do not own your body. You see, your body is God's. He made it. And it's on loan to you. It says in Psalm 139, you made all the delicate inner parts of my body and knit me together in my mother's womb. Thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. Your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it. That last sentence right there, I challenge you when you wake up in the morning and you haven't done anything to your hair yet, and you, uh, you know, you got, you're getting ready to get in the shower, I want you to go stand in front of that bathroom mirror, all right? And you look yourself dead in the eyes, and you say, hmm, God, your workmanship is marvelous. How well I know it, <laughs> right? We can have that kind of confidence in the body that God has given to us because we know that he made it. It's his. And, and the rule of thumb, right, just logic says that if somebody creates something, it's theirs. If you build something, it's yours. If you invent something, it's your invention. Unless you sell it or give it away, it's yours. So the truth is, if God made you, he made your body, he owns it. And get this, not only did, does he already own your body, but he then bought it again. If you look again in scripture, this is incredible. In 1 Corinthians 6, 20, it says, You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. In other words, God already owned your body, and then just to make it doubly clear, he bought you your body again through his death on the cross. This is the best example I can think of for this. When, when my wife and I were engaged— uh, my wife was driving this Jeep Cherokee that her parents, that her dad bought for her, right? So she was driving her dad's car, and then when we got engaged and we were ready to get married, he gave it, you know, transfer the title into our name. It was a gift. So now we own this Jeep Cherokee, and it was great, right? And then about five years into our marriage, we decided we were going to uh, sell that car and buy a new car, Right? And so when my father-in-law got word that we were selling this Jeep Cherokee, he was like, I love that car. Can I buy it from you? Think about that for a moment. He paid for the car twice, right? He bought it to give it to us, and then he bought it from us. It felt really weird selling the car to the person who gave it to you. But that's, you know, we were going to sell it to someone else to be able to have money for the new car. And God loves you so much not only did he make you so he owns your body just in, in and of itself, he then bought your body again through his death on the cross. In other words, church, listen, your body is not yours. You are the manager of God's body. And I really want you to think about this. Everything that God makes, everything that God makes, he made with a purpose. 
He didn't make anything without a purpose. Everything has a purpose. Your body, he made you for a reason. And one day, you will have to stand before God and give an account for the way you used his body that he lent to you. Think about that. You are the manager, the steward of God's body. Number three, lie number three is this. Your body is not that important. Some in this world would want you to think that your body, you know, it's not that important. Maybe even in a, a spiritual sense, in the, in the church, ah, your body is just your body. One day it's going to be gone. Uh, uh, your body's not that important. The truth is that your body is actually a part of Christ's body. In other words, your body is incredibly important. If your body, believer, is a part of Christ's body, well, you can't argue that it's not that important. Now, I would love to get into the theology of your body being a part of Christ, but let me show you where I see this in Scripture. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 15 says, Don't you realize that your bodies are actually part of Christ? Should a man take his body, which is a part of Christ, and join it to a prostitute? Never. And we'd all look at that, like, should we take Christ's body and join it with a prostitute? We should definitely not do that, right? We understand that. But if your body is a part of Christ's body, then think about this logically. What you do to your body, what you do with your body, what you put in your body, all those things, that's, you're, you're dragging Jesus into the mix, and so it's very important that we realize our bodies are incredibly important because they're connected to Christ's body. And so we should treat them as such. We need to, to take care of them. In fact, I want you to think about it this way. When you are intentional about taking care of your body because you know it's connected to Christ's body, you can actually worship God through proper care of your body. It's actually an act of worship. God, I know that my body is connected to yours, and so I want to take care of it. And it's, it's an act of worship to you. And by the way, a lot of people will say that our bodies are unimportant because they're just, it's like a temporary idea. We're just going to have our bodies, and then we're going to, listen, I want you to know that the, the concept of a physical body is not just a temporary idea of God's. You know, at some point, you, the only time that your soul and your spirit will be disembodied, that you won't have a body to go with it, is from the moment you die until the moment Jesus comes back, at which point you will be given a new body. You'll be given a new physical body, body 2.0, a perfected version of it, to which my wife says, amen, right? <laughs> like she is, real, not because of her, because of my body, right? Yeah. Uh, like we will, th this concept of a body is, is Im significant. It's important. So we need to understand that. Here's lie number four. Physical health is easy. Some people will, will try to sell you something on Facebook. They'll try to sell you something online and tell you, hey, if you just take this pill, everything will get better, right? If you just drink this supplement, Everything will start functioning better, right? If you just, uh, you know, do this diet in six months, guaranteed, all the weight will be gone, right? And the, the world would try to tell you that taking care of your body, having physical health is easy. The truth is, is that your body is broken because of the fall. Your body is broken. In other words, it is never going to be easy to maintain the body. It will take discipline. It will take work. It's not going to come naturally to us because we live in a broken world. Now, I don't consider myself that old. I'm, I'm 43 years old. But one thing I'm learning is that every year I grow older, I make more and more noises doing simple things like sitting down, right? <laughs> Have you ever noticed that? You just go to sit down at a certain point and you're like, Ugh. like, why did you just make that sound? I don't know. Well, here's, here's why. The Bible actually tells us I think it's in uh, Romans 8 that it says, all creation is groaning. <laughs> and so the truth is that your body is going to get old. Things are going to hurt, break more easily. It's going to be hard. It gets even harder to maintain physical health. And all of our bodies are different. But at the end of the day, we need to understand that your body is broken because of the fall. 
because of sin. All right, here's uh, lie number five. Lie number five is there is a right body type. This world would love for you to be convinced that there is a specific shape that your body is supposed to be in. There's a specific weight that you're supposed to be in a certain pant size or whatever. And if you're outside of that, then you're off. You're wrong. Now, I want you to understand the Bible doesn't teach that. What the Bible does say is there is a right way to treat your body. Now, all of you have been created uh, in, in the womb by God, right? All of us have been created differently. We're all of different shapes and sizes and different things going on. But at the end of the day, all of us need to make sure with the body that we've been given, the uniqueness of it, that we're treating it properly. There is a right way to treat your body. Physical health is not really easy to be like precisely prescripted for each one of us. I can't just say to every one of you, you just need to do this and you will be physically healthy. Because all of our bodies are so different. Some of you in this room, right, you need more sunscreen than other people in this room. Some of you in this room, you need to take certain supplements or, or medicines to be healthy that other people in this room don't need to take. Some of you in this room, in order to maintain health, you need to avoid peanut butter. Or you need to avoid gluten or something like that, right? Some of us in this room, you can, you can eat like 12 Oreo cookies and it doesn't do anything to your weight. Some of us, like me, you just look at a cookie, <laughs> right? And you, you, you put on a pound. And you're like, what in the world? It's super unfair. But my point is, there is a right way to treat your body and unfortunately, I can't tell you that this is the exact way to do it, that all of us are supposed to do this exact same thing, because there is no right body type. God created you the way you are, and some of our bodies just function differently than others. But we were all created in the image of God. All of us were created in God's image. And I want you to think, are, are there wrong ways to treat your body, the opposite of this? Of course, there are wrong ways to treat your body. If you guys were driving down Aqua Heart Road tomorrow, and as you're driving down, you saw some hooligan with spray paint, spray paint and some graffiti on the side of our building, would that upset you? You'd probably do something about it. I hope you would, right? I hope you'd pull in here and run them off or call the cops or something, right? And why would that bug us? Because while we understand the church is the people, there's nothing really special about this place. But the, the thing that's unique about this building is that it's been dedicated to the worship of God. It's where God's church gathers together to worship God. And if we saw someone spray painting it and defacing it, that ought to, to cause us a little bit like, that's not cool. That's really uncool. But at the end of the day, the truth is that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And is there a wrong way to treat your body? Absolutely. All of us are guilty of this. Many of us. Right? We, we have many times in our life where we, we deface intentionally. We, we put stuff in our body. We, we treat it poorly. We don't exercise. We don't do all the things. And we just treat it like it's, you know, listen, there is a right way to treat your body, but there's not a right body type. All right, number six. Your physical appearance defines you. The truth is that you have already been defined by God. I want you to think about this for a moment. Again, our world would love for you to, that tells you that if your body looks a certain way, if you are at the, some peak of athletic prowess, if your physique is a certain type, if you have a lot of strength and all these things, right? If you, you adorn your body with the right clothing and you have a really cool fashion sense, the world would tell you that, that you are more valuable than someone who doesn't have those things. And I want you to know that that's hogwash, Okay. Your body does not define you. God has already done that. Let me show you the definition that has already been given to you by God. In Ephesians 2.10, it says, For we are God's masterpiece. Say masterpiece. Masterpiece. You, family, beloved, you are God's masterpiece. 
He created us anew in Christ Jesus so we can do things, the good things, that he planned for us long ago. You see, God didn't give you your body to define you. He gave you your body so that he could give you some good things to do with it. He's already defined you. You are a masterpiece of God. Make sure you take care of the body that he's given to you. But your definition comes from God. It's a master. Here's, here's lie number seven. Lie number seven. It is always God's will for you to be in perfect physical health. Now, some churches actually teach this, right? The health and wealth gospel. That, that it is God's ultimate desire in this life for you to have perfect physical health. And if you don't have perfect physical health, there's something wrong with you. There's something you're doing wrong. Well, the truth is this, that God wants you to pursue physical health. He wants you to put in the hard work to, to, to do everything you can to make sure you're physically healthy. But there are going to be times where you are not healthy and God's okay with it. Let me give you a really great example of this in scripture. There's a story about Jesus and his disciples, and they're traveling along, and they come across this man, not a child, right? So at least 18 years, this guy has not been able to see. He's a blind man. He's now a grown man, and Jesus and his disciples come up to him, and here's what they say. Rabbi, his disciples asked him, why was this man born blind? Was it because of his own sins or his parents' sins? They're basically saying, hey, uh, at the end of the day, we can't imagine that you would be okay with this guy being blind, so he must have brought this on himself, or his parents must have done something, and this is the punishment, right, Jesus? And then what does Jesus say? Jesus answered, basically, it wasn't because of his sins or his parents. It has nothing to do with him. It has nothing to do with his sins. He says, this happened so that the power of God could be seen in him. What Jesus ultimately says is, I allowed this man to not be at the peak of physical fitness. He wasn't even able to use his eyes properly. For his entire childhood, leading all the way up into this moment, so that as I heal him now in front of you and in front of others, my glory, my goodness, my power will be revealed in it. So I want you to understand, you might not always be, if you're thinking like, well, if I'm not healthy, if there's something wrong with me, if I'm not perfectly able-bodied or whatever, then there must, listen, there, there could be an element of it that you're responsible for. In fact, that, that's probably, you probably share some responsibility in a lot of those things. But equally, to understand that God might not have you in peak physical health. You might be suffering with an illness. You might be suffering from a disability. You might be experiencing something. And, and that's part of God's plan, to teach you or somebody else something. So, so don't take it too far. Listen, eventually, God does want you to be in perfect health. And when he gives believers a new body, body 2.0, you will experience that body without any physical ailment. And it's going to be awesome. But if, if all of us thought that it was God's will for us to be in perfect physical health at all times, well, then there would be no death. Eventually, your body is going to fail. But we want to do everything we can to pursue health while we have. We've got to do the hard work, pursue healing, get it done, all right? So now, when we're talking about pursuing physical health, or pursuing spiritual health, or financial health, or relational health, remember, we were going to break it down into four simple categories. And I'm going to, I have these four for you really quick today. All right, we got to put good stuff in, we got to keep junk out, we got to exercise, and we got to be careful. That works with your spiritual health, it works with your financial health, it works with your relational health. And it obviously it works with your physical health, right? We want to we wanna put good stuff in, keep junk out, exercise, and be careful. So let me show you what the Bible says about those. The first one, put good stuff in. Now you might be thinking that I'm going to go super obvious with you and say you got to put good food into your body. We'll get there in a second. Before we even worry about the natural side of things. I want you to understand because your body and your soul and spirit are connected, 
the best place to start with putting good stuff into your body when it comes to your physical health is you need to worry about your worship before you worry about your weight. Let me say that again. You need to worry about your worship before you worry about your weight. In Luke 4, verse 8, Jesus says, The scriptures say you must worship the Lord your God and serve him only. The very most important thing that you can think about, if you want to get into a better physical health, if your spiritual health is not where it needs to be, you're going to have a really hard time developing physical health. You need to worry about your worship before you worry about your weight. And even better, do you know that worship is an incredibly powerful, like a supernatural medicine for your soul? Do you know that? That worship will affect your physical health. In fact, in Proverbs 17, it says, a cheerful heart is good medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's strength. A cheerful heart, a heart that's full of joy and hope and purpose and love and all those things, that kind of a heart, that kind of a body, that kind of a spirit it is going to be good medicine for you physically. And yet the opposite, if you don't have those things, if you're moping around, you don't have any joy in your life, you don't have any purpose, no worship, you're going to find that it saps your strength and your physical health is going to be affected by it. So we're going to worry about our worship before we worry about our weight. Now let's talk practically real fast about food. Here's what the Bible says. Genesis uh, 1 29 says, then God said, look, I've given you every seed bearing plant throughout the entire earth and all the fruit trees for your food. To which the vegans and vegetarians in the room say, amen. amen. <laughs> but wait, Genesis 9 Verse two through three say, and all the animals of the earth, all the birds of the sky, all the small animals that scurry along the ground, then all the fish in the sea will look on you with fear and terror. I have placed them in your power. I have given them to you for food, just as I have given you grain and vegetables. That's right. That's right. We got to be louder, people. That's right. So when it comes to putting good stuff in, the Bible says and talks about grain and vegetables. It talks about uh, meat and uh, that God has given us different things for food. I want you to understand that when I say put good stuff in, I'm not just saying put good like nutritional food in your body. You certainly should do that. You should put food that your body needs to be uh, physically healthy. You need to put that kind of food into your body. But do you know that good things in also can be things that are enjoyable, that bring a smile to your face? It's okay to have a well-balanced approach to putting good stuff in your body. I want to put stuff that's good for my strength and my nutrients and keeping all the chemicals balanced. But I also want to put some good stuff in my body that make me really thankful that I have the ability to to enjoy a piece of pie after a Thanksgiving meal. So we gotta be balanced in our approach to what does good stuff mean? In 1 Timothy, it actually, chapter six, uh, we're reminded that God has given us certain things just for our enjoyment. He's given us certain things to bring a smile to our face. It's okay to put good tasting food in your mouth right after you eat that kale, right? 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. In other words, I want you to know your body, talk to your doctor, figure out what it is that is well balanced for your body type and what, how many calories you're supposed to be taking in and at what point you're being excessive and, and put good stuff in. All right. That's, that's the first thing. Number two, keep junk out. Now, I don't want you to take this too far. I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy a really great burger with cheese and bacon from time to time. Certainly do that. I'm not saying avoid ice cream. Like, I, we, we love ice cream in my house, right? So when I say keep junk out, what is the definition of junk? What is it that we're talking about when we say junk? Well, I think it's a couple things. You see, the Bible gives us some Christian liberty to make decisions uh, in certain ways. Let me show you a verse. In 1 Corinthians 6, Verse 12, it says, you say, I'm allowed to do anything, but not everything is good for you. 
And even though I'm allowed to do anything, I must not become a slave to anything. In other words, food becomes junk for you when, it be, when you become a slave to it. When you have to have it, when you can't say no to it, when you're taking in more than you need and, and hoarding it, it's become like a God to you. And in that case, it's become junk. If it's hurting your body more than it's helping your body, it's become junk. You need to keep the junk out. You got to keep the junk out. Now, I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm getting political here for just a moment, but a little side note. As we're talking about keeping junk out of your body, I want you to be very intentional to, to know that you are the manager of the body that God has given to you. And therefore, you should pay very close attention to everything that you put in your body. You're responsible for doing a little bit extra legwork. Like, hey, what is this thing? Just because the world or some medical journal tells you that something is good for your body, I promise you this world in many instances is not on your side. And so you need to be very careful about what you put in your body. In fact, if anyone ever tells you that you have to put something in your body that you don't want to put in your body, our church will gladly write you a religious exemption saying, we believe that this person's body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and nothing goes in it that they aren't comfortable with. I want you to know that. You certainly reach out to me, I'll write you a religious exemption. Now, I purposely didn't get very detailed in what I just said. (laughs) Do whatever you want with it. Do your own research. Make a decision. Trust the Holy Spirit that lives in you. Just know that you are the manager of your body. All right? Be careful that you don't put junk into it. Number three, exercise. 1 Corinthians 9, 27 says, I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. You know, in this room, we all have different body types. We're all different ages, stages. What might be a proper exercise for you is probably going to be different for the person sitting next to you. Some of you, the exercise you need to do is just walk around the block once a day. Just you start using your body in a way that you haven't used it recently. Others, you, you might be needing to run eight miles a day. I don't know, all right? That's not me, I hope, right? Um, my point is, all of us need to exercise our body. Use it or lose it. Make sure you're taking your body and you're, 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 you're exercising it. You're using it so that it stays healthy. Just like a car that sits in a garage for 10 years. It's not going to function properly, right? You need to use it for it to be well-maintained. Number four, with the two minutes I have left, I want you to be careful. Be careful with your body. In other words, don't overdo it. Exercise responsibly. Don't put yourself in silly situations. Have you ever heard the phrase, uh, play stupid games, win stupid prizes? A lot of us, we put our bodies into these weird situations where we're like, uh, listen, Jesus didn't, by the way, if God ever asked you to put your body in harm's way, definitely present your body as a living sacrifice. If God tells you to, to put your body in a place where like, hey, this might not be super good for your body, listen, always follow his will. But sometimes we put our bodies in really dumb situations for the thrill of it, and we're not careful, and then we, we end up getting hurt. And we're not able to use our bodies the way God would have us to because of something we did. A great example of some wisdom. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, the Ravens, right? We, we lost a game that we could have easily won. Why did we lose that game? Because we already made it in the playoffs. We're not putting our best players on the field. We're not going to risk them getting injured. Like, we're in. We're going to put in some people that if they get hurt, it's not the end of the deal. You know, at the end of the playoff season. And so we have to be careful to use our bodies carefully so that we don't injure them because of our foolishness and carelessness. Put good stuff in. Keep junk out. Exercise and be careful. All right? What do we do with this? What now, God? What do we do with this information? I want you to take your what now, God, little paragraph that you have on your note sheet, and I want you to write something there 
that the Holy Spirit has put on your heart today to do. Maybe for you, it's like, I need to just go back and watch last week's message. I need to worry about my spiritual health first. Maybe that's what you need to do. Maybe you're in a spot where the Holy Spirit has put a clear prompting in your, in your life that you need to do something about your physical health. Maybe there's some junk you're putting in that you need to stop doing. Maybe you're not exercising the way you're supposed to. Maybe you're, you're uh, not putting good stuff into your body that you need to. I don't know what it is. You write it down and share it with somebody else so they can hold you accountable. There's a, a, a passage of scripture that, that John writes about where Jesus encounters a man who's been sick for 38 years. Say 38. 38 years. And Jesus walks up to this guy. It says in John 5, 6. When Jesus saw him and knew he had been ill for a long time, he asked him, would you like to get well? Doesn't this seem like a really stupid question? Like, what do you mean would you like to get well? The guy's been sick for 38 years. Of course he wants to get better. But sometimes we look at a question like that and the, the truth is that we're in here right now. We've opened up God's word. He's looking at you and saying, hey, would you like to get well? Again, now maybe you're in a season of illness that God is, is orchestrated, that he's using for a purpose. But for most of us, the reasons that we're hurting, the reasons that we're, we're, we're not doing all the things that God would have us do is because we're not taking care of our physical bodies the way he'd ask us to. And if Jesus were to ask you right now, hey, would you like to get well? The obvious answer for all of us should be, yes, I want to get well. Well, we're going to have to do the work. We're going to have to pursue physical health so we can use our bodies the way the owner's manual tells us to be able to function and, and accomplish the purpose, the good purpose that God has given each of us. Let's pray together. God, thank you so much for this morning. Thank you for this gathering of your church. I pray that you would help us to fully recognize the importance of taking care of this temple where your Holy Spirit resides. Help us not to be the ones that are guilty of, of defacing it and, and pouring junk into it and not taking care of exercising it and putting it in risky situations for no reason. God, would you help us to, to ultimately use our bodies in such a way that they can glorify you, help us fulfill the great commission you've given to us. Help us pursue physical health as much as you'd allow it for your purposes. God, we thank you, we love you, and we pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Well, we are so thankful for the truth that was shared in this message today. Please know that we, as a church, are praying that what you have learned today, the truths that God has put deep into your heart, will manifest themselves and grow themselves into something amazing. And as always, you can experience that with other believers, other people who are walking this walk of faith at ACC on Sunday mornings. Please remember this, you belong at ACC.